Hey guys, this is Chubbs, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create your own Command & Conquer Red Alert 3 map uh, using the World Builder tool. And it's pretty easy to get uh, to learn how to use, so I'll go ahead and sort of walk you through a simple map. Uh, so let's go ahead and get things started. So if you don't have it, uh, check the video description. I do have a link over on the right hand side there. So let's go ahead and start it and go to File, then New. Notice here it'll show you how large the map is. Uh, you can set the border size. The initial height is actually the default height all, ac all across the map when you first begin. So that's uh, what that value implies. So these are the settings I'll use. Just these ones that you see here. So go ahead and click OK. You'll first see that there's sort of a grid texture all over your map like this. Uh, what you'll want to do to get rid of that is go up to the paint bucket paint bucket tool click that then go on the right hand side here this will be all of your texture folders so go down and click the New York folder once then click the grass texture then go over here just click one time on anywhere on the grid and you'll be given a beautiful grass texture that expands all across your map so uh, this is pretty much it. You can use the right mouse button as well to scroll across your map like this. And that's pretty much it. So we have it all covered in grass. Notice this yellow boundary line that goes all the way across the map. What this shows is uh, basically uh, you can't move or build anything outside this. This is important if you if you do not see this in your editor uh, what you need to do is go up to where it says view as I will do here right now and then click click view and then go down and click show map boundaries make sure that there's a check mark beside that like there is on my settings here once you do that uh, and you see the boundary and everything let's go ahead and shape the terrain so go up here and click the height brush tool it's just a regular paint brush looking tool without a plus or minus symbol. What this does is it will make all of the terrain a certain height so it doesn't dig and it doesn't really make a mountain it just makes it all one specific height. Uh, the width of the brush is how big it is the feather width is how large of an area around the brush will be affected and the brush height uh, determines how how high the terrain will be once you use the tool. So it, it auto automatically as soon as you click it sets it to a certain height watch as I hold down click here uh, I'm using one, 118 as the height so watch what happens here so as you can see it's not actually raising it gradually it's just making it one height automatically you can even go down below the default map height which for me is 16 so I'll bring mine down to 4 and it, you can't see it very well but it actually sort of digs also so you can do that to make valleys that are a specific uh, height for example or anything like that so I'm gonna go ahead and just reset this all back to 16 and what I'll show you here is click the paintbrush tool with the plus symbol what this does is it sort of raises the terrain so this is more like a mountain tool that you can use to create mountains mounds anything like that so I'm going to adjust some settings here and I'm going to start holding down click and notice it gradually raises instead of quickly raising and I'll go ahead and do this and as you'll notice I'm starting to sort of create a mountain and what I'll do is I'll create a mountainous area up here near the upper half of the map what I plan on doing is placing an old derrick in between these two mountains here what I'll also do, as you'll see here in just a second, is I'll place a mountain boundary around the, uh, just outside that yellow boundary. So that in game, so that way it'll sort of show a mountain uh, when you look towards the boundary instead of it just being flat land that extends outwards. So it sort of makes more sense uh, that you can't go outside the boundary, that is. So here's the, the playing area, sort of a small area since this is a simple map, but it'll do I guess so uh, now that you have this playing area and everything created what you're gonna want to do obviously is 
plop down some player start points. So to do this, just go up here to this sort of looks like a constellation. Uh, that symbol right there, click it. That's the waypoint tool. Go down where you want your player one start to be and just click once. Once you do that, it'll create sort of a waypoint one. But what you want to do is go on the right hand side, bring this drop down menu down and click player one start. So now that's the player one start point. Do the same thing for player two. I'll place him over here and click player two start. So now we have player one start on the left, player two start on the right. So as you can see, it's very easy to place those down. And once you have the player starts, uh, obviously you're going to want to have a way to get money. So let's go ahead and place down an or node for each of the players. To, uh, to do that, it's easy as well. But what you'll want to do actually is hold down Control, Alt, and then press the letter G. You'll get a grid like I got here. The reason you want this is because the OR nodes need to be placed on the grid so that they'll line up properly in game. Uh, you don't have to do this for all derricks necessarily, but make sure you do it for all OR nodes. So go up here and click this three way directional arrow now. That's the Add Object button. Then go on the right here and click Buy Native Type. Then go to Neutral. Then go to Structure. Then go down here and click OR Node. So just drag it over here uh, and then click where you want it to be placed. As you can see, it's snapping to the grid automatically, which is a good thing. So let's place that just above the player one start here. Leave the team as neutral. Do the same thing for player two. So I just go ahead and plop one down right above player two. And there we go. So that's pretty much it uh, in terms of the OR nodes. You don't have to do anything else for those. So you can, if you want to, you can go to uh, hold control, alt, and then press the letter G again to remove the grid. And I do that here in just a moment. And there we go. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place an old derrick down that you can capture with an engineer. With these, uh, you don't have to have the grid on. You can place them anywhere you want as long as an engineer can reach one. Reach one. So go to that same add object button, click old Eric as I did there, then just click where you want it to go. And that's all you got to do. I'm just going to drag it here to a different spot. And as you can see, now that I don't have the grid, it's sort of free form, but drag it anywhere that an engineer can reach and place it down. So I'm placing it there, so that should be uh, active. You can capture that now and get money just as you would in any other map. So that's really just about it for for the placement of the uh, economy, uh, uh, economical structures. And then I'll go to edit and edit player list and then click add skirmish players as I did just then. What that will do is that will add in the AI for you. So uh, once you do that, the AI will be entered in and what I'm doing here is I'm just using the dig tool which is the paintbrush with the minus symbol and then go up here and click sort of the uh, sort of the checkerboard texture as a uh, as I'm hovering over now what that does is that adds uh, multiple textures you can select any of the textures and I'm just going to show you something here um, here initially I choose a bad texture uh, as I do here the one that I choose doesn't work and I go ahead and switch it back out and uh, and while I'm doing this I just want to remind you uh, since I skipped over it quick go to edit edit player list and then make sure that you click add skirmish players if you haven't done that so uh, now that I've reviewed that um, as you can see I'm adding down just uh, random textures to show you this cool feature as you can see uh, there's jagged edges along that along the lines here uh, it doesn't look right so w what you can do is there's an easy way to to get over this error it's actually one of the better features